Hello and welcome to episode one, season three of TechPad. Today we've got a super special episode on Apple MacBook Pros and all that good stuff and uh, hopefully it'll be a really good time. So my name is Jackson Stats and this is my co-host, Blake Smith. All right, before we get into all that stuff, we're going to read a quick article which is on the Steam Deck. And the article is called, Steam Deck Gets an Official Release Date, First Units to Ship in February. And this is by Matt Kim, and it's from IGN. All right. So, Steam Deck will go on sale starting February 25th with the first batch of handheld and held set to ship on February 20th. In a blog post, Steam says customers will begin getting invites shortly after 10 p.m. 10 a.m. PT on February 25th and will have three days or 72 hours from the receipt of their order email to make their purchase. If a person doesn't make an order at this time, the person next in the queue will get the chance to place an order. Valve says it is hoping to send emails for orders out in batches weekly. All right. Order emails will be sent out in the same order as the reservations, and Valve will only let you order the Steam Deck model that you originally reserved. The initial res reservation deposit will also be applied to the final price of the Steam Deck at checkout. So, they have a pecking order. When did it open? The Let's see, pre-orders of like last year. It's been a while. It's been, I could check, but it's it's been like a year. This It's been a long time. I've been waiting. I pre-ordered the Steam Deck. Yeah. And there's 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 two models. There's 64 gig, 64 gig storage model, the 256, and the 512 gig NVMe SSD model. And each one comes with their, you know, various perks. But I ordered the highest end one, which starts at about $650, because I'm looking to replace my Shadow subscription with it. Assuming that okay. Shadow, you know, it still sucks as much as it does now. <laughs> It's, it's got a couple of issues, but I am fully ready to pay that price because it's going to be awesome. I'm super excited. But I was late to the pre-order, though. Oh, uh, so you might be... So even though it starts shipping on, like, the 25th and 20... Or start the orders start coming in on the 25th. But that's for the first reservation. Yeah, I was definitely not the first reservation. So I'm going to be probably waiting. Their estimate for me was quarter two. Okay. Which is an infinitely long amount. If you guys want to hear more about the Steam Deck, maybe a special, not necessarily a special episode, but just a whole dedicated TechPad episode to the Steam Deck, make sure to let us know because I'm definitely, I'm definitely hyped for the Steam Deck. It's going to be awesome. So. And uh, we forgot to say what it was, and it's a uh, Steam's, it's Valve's take on a handheld PC gaming device, and you should be able to run your Steam library. Yeah, it's like, like a, it's like a, nice. um, a Switch. Except for Steam. Except for PC games. Yeah. Games you already own, technically. Oh, yeah, because you could just connect your account to it, right? Yeah. Well, that's the thing about the Switch is that if I moved to the Switch and had to... Well, at first, I couldn't play BeamNG Drive on it. You can play all those games. And I couldn't play... Uh, I don't know. Do they have Civilization VI? Civ VI? Yeah, on Switch. I don't know. I'm not sure. Either way, I'd have to buy if I moved to Switch those two games, even if they were available for Switch. But I could just buy the Steam Deck and be able to play it better <laughs> and I already own the game, so. And uh, how much was the deposit? It was $5. Oh, oh so it's taking the, yeah, they, they, 650 Yeah, yeah. They, they say in there that it's like, oh, your deposit will go to the go to the final price of the, <laughs> the console. That's but, not even shipping. Yeah, it, it probably doesn't even cover shipping. So, anyways, I'm hyped. I'm ready for the Steam Deck. I've been waiting years for something like this so all right well cool let's get started with the uh apple macbooks the, the new ones MacBooks. and also the macbook pro 13 inch but the m1 chip yes well so apple i would say maybe not recently we're a little bit behind schedule on covering some of these new macs but apple released a grouping i think it was during our special we covered that release of the new Apple MacBooks. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> they had already had the 13 inch model and they added the 14 and 16 inch models. So that's the size of the, you know, the, the diameter of the computer. That's how they measure it. Um, so it's not diagonal? It is diagonal. I 
think. Maybe I'll find out. Because then it wouldn't be diameter. Also. Yeah, no, it's diagonal. It's diagonal. diagonal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we thought we'd do a special episode on, not a special episode, a dedicated episode on the significance of these MacBooks because it really yeah. is a significant upgrade and it is probably going to change the PC manufacturing space for a long time. Because, yeah. I mean, these things are pretty awesome. I mean, not just only uh, new MacBooks and different designs. They also have the two new chips. Yes, they have. really nice. They're not relying on other companies to make their chips anymore. They're, they're actually building their own chips at this point. So M1 Pro and M1 Max. Yes. Following on the Apple M1 chip that they put in their Mac Minis, MacBook Pros, the 13-inch, and their MacBook Airs. MacBook Airs. And their iMac, too. And the iPad? Yeah, the iPad Pro as well. So Blaze over here is fortunate enough to have an M1 MacBook Air. Yes, it's not very cool. Well, it's not. It yeah. is cool. It doesn't run hot it's at all. It's not a true M1 chip either because it has seven core GPU yep. and an eight core CPU, which is the basic M1 chip. But still, what do you think of it? I mean, is it? It's really reliable. Uh, I've noticed that some of the updates sometimes mess with things on it, but I think that's because they're trying to make the update work for older gen Intel CPUs and M1. Yeah. It's kind of iffy. But so, other than that, it's really nice. So what about the performance? Is it adequate for a MacBook Air? I mean... Yeah, I mean, MacBook Airs aren't meant to be too good at, like, yeah. very load intensive or intense load workloads. But it works really well for what I use it for, which is schoolwork, uh, occasionally Discord, and just watching movies and such. How is the battery life? Really good. Because that was a major selling point. Yeah, it's, it's really power good. efficiency. I mean, it charges really fast, and then I can just use it for a really long time. Well, I'm sure, I mean, probably what, 15 hours? 10? Yeah, well, yeah. it depends. Like if I'm running uh, a lot of applications for school and then also having title music, it tends to wear down. Yeah. But it still lasts, a, it lasts the full school day easily. Cool. With 100%. So what Apple has done with these new MacBooks is taken all of the greatness that Blaze has just described in his M1 Air, although it's a little bit of the less powerful than one chip. It's still, mm -hmm. the, the base is there, it's an M1 chip. Yeah. And they've stacked a bunch of different chips. Actually, they just, they've just smushed a bunch of M1 chips into one bigger chip. Well, and made two different levels. Yeah, well, but essentially those two levels are just additional M1 chips stacked on. Yeah, if you have one, might as well add more. Yeah. I mean, there you go. It, and, so if you notice, they've actually, on their specs page here on my laptop, I'm going to close this tab, um, you can see that the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air 13-inch, the 13-inch models, technically have the same minus a GPU core or two, Which the doesn't... same M1 chip. Yeah. Um, but if I go down the specs page, you can see that they've introduced these new Apple M1 Pro and Apple M1 Pro Max right here, so M1 Pro and M1 Max, as opposed to just the M1. And these are geared towards the same, like, power efficiency and just general reliability and features. Yeah. But they just have more power. They're designed for somebody who, probably like me, who needs to do transcoding, video editing, the whole lot in their laptop. And so far, from what we've seen, is that these things are pretty amazing yeah it's really the heart of it's, it's really what makes these new macbook pros so so great and if i go into the configuration here we'll choose the 16 inch oh wow they they have the same settings right or the same selection of yeah. ram or memory yeah you can see here that let's see and processor options yeah this you have the M1 Pro, you have the M1 Pro, and the M1 Max. Those are the three tiers. So there's 
two tiers of storage. So the only difference between this first tier and the second tier is... Uh, Fun fact, you can either buy two 14-inch uh, MacBook Pros that are just the base M1 Pro chips, or you can get one M1 Pro with uh, a terabyte SSD storage. <laughs> yes, the storage the storage prices are expensive. These first two tiers, the only difference is double the storage in the second tier. Think, However, yeah. in the third tier is where you start getting into the M1 Max. If we look at the specs, which are really truly impressive for a completely new chip that somebody else has designed, not an Intel chip, not an AMD chip, these are pretty impressive specs. I mean, they all have 10 core CPUs. Really, the difference is GPU. the GPU. And neural engine. And neural engine. What, do you know what that is? I think the neural engine has something to do with like machine learning. Like if you're using Photoshop and you apply some sort of effect that you know is recognizes the photo you're editing and makes the changes accordingly, I think. Yeah. Um, it's just makes it easier for the computer to recognize patterns and objects and that sort of thing, I think. Mm. Now when you have a regular laptop or desktop, yeah. you have your CPU up here, you have your GPU down here, and they talk to each other through the motherboard. Through the motherboard. What Apple has done is they've taken the CPU and they've just smashed the GPU right on board. Yeah. And they share memory and they share the same CPU, which allows them to be very, very fast. So effectively... And the memory is also yeah. the RAM. Yeah, the, the RAM. It's, also it's just secure. soldered right on the, the uh, motherboard, <laughs> or not the motherboard, the and chip. The, and the SSDs are so fast that they're... Can substitute for RAM as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is incredible. However, that brings an argument of reliability, or serviceability to the table. Yeah. If you've put everything on one little tiny chip about this big, there's no way that you could service that whatsoever. No be very difficult to do so. The entire computer Even is just one could. chip. And it's like on desktops, you just slot in more RAM, your RAM dies, or pull the GPU out, put a new one in. So, and Apple doesn't really have, well, they have warranties, but it's a big hassle to replace a whole laptop rather than just one component. If something dies, it turns immediately into e-waste. It's gone. That's the problem. The whole laptop, or at least the whole motherboard, which is just gone. And this is going against their uh, Apple self-service. Yes. Much. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there's the Apple self-service program they're rolling out, which allows customers to service their own devices, in theory. Um, well. well, they have access to Apple-certified tools. Instructions. Instructions. Genuine parts. And all that stuff. The whole thing. So in theory, they could fix their iPhone. But they do example. recommend it to be someone who is trained mm -hmm. or certified yes. to work on Apple products because I'm guessing it's going to be really easy for someone who does not know anything to just destroy their... Yeah. And I think that's just good press. Product. Because it, it on is. the... <laughs> On the surface, everybody's like, yay, Apple's letting people service their products. And I want you. But, but well, there's I, nothing to service on the laptops. Well, the, well, okay. But you have to go back to, is I think it's personally worth it because of the how compact it is and how quick and all the... I think it's worth it. What, what's worth it? Having it non-serviceable. I think so, too. Because it's such a great chip. Yeah. Very fast, has really high specs and all that stuff, which kind of outweighs the self-service. Yeah, and but on the other hand, I mean, they're making these laptops so thick now. It's almost. Well, I'm not sure if that's true, because see, one of the I have a lot a really old Sony laptop in my basement. It's, mm -hmm. it's white. It's about well, that thick. It's it's pretty big. It has a socketed CPU and yeah. socketed RAM. I think we've. I, we went back the side view. The side view, yeah. The looks side exactly profile like it. looks huge. 
you but get into the this day. is actually smaller. I think that is it? I would rather personally take a less serviceable, more compact product well, this over is, the huge, like chungus MacBook Pro. This, yeah. Well, this is not serviceable, and it is thick. Yes, and I mean we we've been talking about all the internals, but let's take a moment to look at what the new laptops look like. No. You don't want to? You want to take a look? Or do you don't like it? I don't like it. You don't like it? No, they put the they have that little weird cutout for the camera. And it's huge. Oh the notch. It's a ten eighty P camera. It doesn't need that big of a notch. Yeah, Seriously. so it, it if you look at my screen, let's see if I can zoom into the photo here. Or just like move the camera up or like they have put it down. I don't know. Well, for those of you with an iPhone, new iPhone, iPhone 13, iPhone 12, iPhone 11, iPhone X, I think. I think that's when they introduced the notch. You'll be familiar with the big intrusive notch that comes probably down the screen. I mean, with the, the phone, camera. it doesn't matter too much. But yeah. This is a laptop. But exactly, this is a laptop. And if you, Apple has done a good job of hiding this notch in the backgrounds of their the stock background. Stock wallpaper. It almost seems like they're embarrassed to put that out there. But I there's mean, this big notch right here where the webcam and it makes it look so much worse. Yeah, some of the other things are that is not as highly controversial as some of their other things on this laptop, but it's definitely yeah. there. And the uh, top view looks like this exact same as every other. Yeah. MacBook they've released. So they, they haven't really changed too much cosmetics other than the notch and uh, it's more thicker. Yeah. Now, another thing that people are so happy with on this laptop mm -hmm. is the addition of ports. You mean re edition? Re edition, course. thank you. Of ports. If, if you look at my MacBook, you'll notice that yes, it is very thin. Garbage. But <laughs> there's only two Type C ports right here. Yeah, that's a... Uh, For the entire computer. Me too. Yeah. And you get one audio jack. 3.5 millimeter audio jack. I have to carry around all of the dongles. All of them to make it work. I have to you know, Ethernet adapters, HDMI adapters, USB adapters, the whole thing. This is just there. They've added a little bit of thickness. I mean, this is a big computer. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah, it's, it's thick. It's like five pounds if you get the upgrades. Yeah. But it also has MagSafe. Um, oh, an yeah, SD think. card slot and an HDMI slot. And two Thunderbolts. And three Thunderbolts, actually. Three? Yeah. Okay. And that's yeah. awesome. And the MagSafe is really cool. For those of you who don't know, MagSafe is a like a magnetic charging solution. Magnetically connected. Yeah, so it magnetically connects so that if you're you know, sitting at the kitchen. If your $3,000 laptop is sitting on your kitchen table yeah. and your dog or cat hits that charging cable, it's not on the ground, like if you have Thunderbolt. Yeah, it just it just pops right off. Pops up. Like Thunderbolt, it's going down. Yeah, Thunderbolt, your laptop's just going. It's gone. And there's, there's a big fat dent in the side now, if that, if that happens. <laughs> probably, but probably gone. my personal favorite is the addition of the SD card slot. Well, I, mm. Because this is a MacBook designed for pros. Mm -hmm. Guess it is designed for video. It is super annoying when I'm working in the studio to go. Oh, let me transfer this 128 gigs worth of footage. Yeah. That I just shot to my MacBook. But I have to go and spend another 10 minutes looking for an adapter, plugging it in, slotting it in. Right? I have the adapter. Well, with well I do. Yes, exactly. See, Blaze. I even yeah. have a, a bag of dongles. And adapters to put in here. But I don't, you have a bag. I, yeah, I have a bag. You gotta pull out this thing. Yeah. Right here. And then you have to connect it through the Thunderbolt. Yep. And then you can finally connect, you know, ports and Ethernet and HDMI and SD cards. What I don't see is a micro SD though. But that's fine. Is it? Well, nowadays, m most micro SD cards come with a big SD adapter. Does it? And yeah. I mean, most cameras don't. Well, I guess that's not true. A lot of cameras do use. Well, I mean, what do these use? Well, these cameras we're using right now, the Panasonic 4Ks, use regular size SD cards. 
That makes sense. And the at school, we have this rack. And we have the, yep. the recorder. All it takes. No yep. It's it's a pretty standard for higher end to use micro SD cards. Do you know about the max transfer, like the transfer speed? It depends on the class of the SD card. Some are rated for more, some are rated for Well, for the laptop, does it have oh. a cap? Probably the highest end rating, if I were to guess, on the SD cards. Because it is specifically meant for yeah. video. Yeah. Um, and creation. So don't get this if you're just going to go to college and browse and Facebook. English. <laughs> yeah, if you're browsing Facebook, you don't need a MacBook Pro. Really. You know, it's Just get a MacBook Air. Unless you have the money. I mean, if you want to buy a MacBook Pro, go buy a MacBook Go ahead. But it's not necessary. No, put that towards your, like, your college. Now, this is a pretty thick laptop. Yeah, I don't have, I don't mind it. However, would you say that the increase in volume that this laptop takes up is less than the volume of carrying around all those adapters? Uh, yeah, probably. Because the adapters are all weird shapes and sizes. You have to get a whole bag. This is just, it's just a little bit thicker. And... It doesn't matter. It makes it more durable, too. Form over function. It looks more durable. Function anyways. over form, I guess, is the better way of saying this. That's why so many people are happy with this laptop. It's taken a step back from Apple's previous designs where they were prioritizing form over function and angering a lot of people in the process and making a laptop that's really powerful, classic yeah. Apple. It's nice, it's sleek, it's very easy to use. And then just, you know, it works. There's no need to carry dongles. It's just a nice laptop to have. Okay. Okay. So you do much more video editing and all that stuff. Do you care about the design as much, or do you care more for function? I would care about the design. Do you? So you much prefer having well, something that so looks Well, so actually, I, I spoke wrong. I think that it depends. I like the metal. Because or I like, like the way. It, Do you like okay. like wedge? I would or not. I don't care about the shape. Okay. I care about the functionality and how durable it is. Do you care how it looks? No. Like on the outside, if it looked like a block. No. Absolutely not. I'm as long as it has good battery life, you powerful hardware, and I can work on it. And they didn't. Really, it's a good laptop. They didn't really reduce the battery. Uh, how long you can use it for. Yeah, it's... It's still like in the... Okay, so the 14-inch has like a 17-hour battery, and the 16-inch has like a 21-hour battery. And I'm pretty sure insane. it depends on the uh, CPU you choose as well as that stuff. So watchers, if you... I, this is a challenge, a tech pad challenge. Find a Microsoft PC laptop. Just, just a PC laptop in general. Well, they can get 20 hours battery life. With these specs. Yeah, with these with that ten with these core specs. thirty-two of oh, the ten core CPU. Thirty-two core GPU. Yeah. Thirty-two gigs of RAM. Eight terabyte. Terabyte storage, the whole bit. Sixty-four gigs of RAM. You I you can't do it. And I will gladly eat my words if somebody sends me an email. Yeah. Jackson.stats at lawmapublicmedia.org. Send it to me, and I would gladly eat my words if somebody proves it to me. We'll but pad on it. Yeah. Because I'll be impressive. Yeah, I, I would I would be willing to dedicate a whole tech pad episode to proving, you know, to showing you that Microsoft laptop, if you can. We can't forget the 1080p based on camera. They finally upgraded. Fine. It has been years since we've had a 1080p, the, the bare minimum style of webcam. But they've had 720 forever. Yeah, and the 720 is Garbage. And they have decent software to make it look nicer. Mm -hmm. But why don't you separate the camera? Yeah. They finally Seriously. did, though. They finally did. Why did it take them so long? Yeah. Now, some of the other things that I'd like to mention yeah. about this laptop are the keyboard, which is no longer a butterfly keyboard. Well, they changed that back with mine. That's true. But there's... Magic? But, the, you know, it, it's a point to make that they are still using Magic Keyboard. And it's more reliable, it's better to type on, yada, yada, yada. And the display is now 120 hertz. Oh, they finally made it on par with the iPad. Yes. So this, this display is going to look gorgeous. 
And, and it does. The, I've seen it. What's the resolution? Uh, it's their. I think it's their Retina resolution. It's not. It's not, not 4K, sure it, and it's above 1080. Yeah, it's their Liquid Retina XDR. Yeah. That's what mine. Oh boy, has. don't you love marketing? Does mine have that? Liquid Retina XDR. Yeah, your your laptop has that. Although it's not Liquid Retina XDR, it's just. Retina. I wish they could just give me a resolution. But I guess it works. In well, different. I can find out on my laptop. You go to System Preferences, Displays. You can. Maybe I was wrong. Does not say it. Oh, also, not the, seen it. your payment plan for 12 months. That's price. It's a little pricey. Yeah. The, the third tier, that's $291 a month. That's a paycheck for me every month. Well, if I wanted to buy again, you work at school. That is true. But this is still, I mean, that's nothing to, that's a hefty price to pay for a laptop for 12 months. Yeah, I'd say so. These are more expensive than my car. Yeah. <laughs> All of them are. <laughs> okay, well, we are running out of time here. Fortunately. We've got about four minutes left. And in those four minutes, okay. anyway. I just want to say that these specs right here for an ARM chip. ARM, I forgot. Yeah, they're, it's, it's, they're using the ARM architecture, and Apple is making these chips. Is revolutionary. The performance of these is on par with the professional PC laptop. They're on par with oh, like geez. Intel's greatest offerings. And they're for, on par with NVIDIA GPUs. It's for, and that's for desktop. Yeah. They're on par with desktops. Yeah. And this is a laptop. And the pricing for them is pretty similarly matched to yeah. a desktop with those specs. And this is a workstation. I mean, some people say this is expensive, and it is. But for these specs, it's not as expensive as you think. No. And they still have the uh, options for MacBooks for people who aren't going to do that. They still have like the, wait, what do they have? They still have the Air and they still have the Base Pro 13 inch. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to spend that much, you don't have to. Yeah. But so in conclusion, worth it. They've taken all of the great specs of their M1 products and all of their MacBook, the previous MacBooks, that, Beautiful trackpad, great design, nice aluminum, and all of that yeah. packed in desktop workstation grade processing and made just a really great product in general. I'm a fan. I, I am also a fan. If I, had, if I had this money, I'd buy it immediately. I would not. Why is that? You just don't need it, right? I just, the things I use stuff for, I don't need it. I would, it'd be more beneficial for me to get an iPad Pro. Yeah. Right. There you go. The iPad Pro is an M1 chip too. Yeah. So I would just encourage you, if you've never considered a Mac before, maybe now is the time to consider it. Or check it out. Or check it out, at least. Because it's looking pretty good. They're, Apple's doing a good job. Yeah. I still stand by my Android cell phone, though. I don't like the iPhone as much. Is it the layout? It's just iOS and the notch in general. But. Well, okay. <laughs> We'll so get into that now. Yeah, well, <laughs> next episode, next time. We, I would recommend this laptop. Good yeah. job, Apple. And with that. Ending. Yes. Ending. Do you have anything else to say, though? Uh, I think it'd be really good for if you're a professional in that. A creative professional. Yes. It'd be really Great good. for professionals. Yes. Cool. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you uh, wanted to see any of our other TechPad episodes, they're all on Online Public Media. And I'd encourage you to check them out. There's some pretty good ones in there. If you're watching on Channel 8, I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you're on YouTube, thanks for watching as well. Twitch, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on all of those platforms. And we'll see you next Tuesday at 6 o'clock for another great episode of TechPad. Thank you for watching. <laughs>